Hi guys. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Listen, I'm going to do a quick um, recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac uh, reunion part one. Listen, um, Real Housewives of Potomac is over as we know it. It has come to an end. That's it. So long. Farewell. This season was the worst season ever. And I hold Giselle and Robin responsible. You know what's funny? A couple of seasons back, all over social, excuse me, <clears throat> all over social media, people were saying that Real Housewives of Potomac has surpassed Real Housewives of Atlanta in popularity. Two seasons ago, like RHOP was riding high. They had tremendous potential. And that was on whose back? That was all on Candace's back. And I'm sorry for the people that, you know, that hate Candace out there, but that's, those are the facts. It was on, it was all on Giselle, not Giselle, on Candace's back. And I really think that the cast knew this and realized this and they plotted to bring her down. I wholeheartedly believe that. And Candace knows that. And you know what? Even though Candace was receiving a lot of hate online, but you know what? Good press, bad press is still press because the bad press still catapulted her, her acting, her career, her singing career, even the, um, the perfume. Uh, and I said this a couple of reviews ago, the perfume with, um, perfumes, de Marley, that was, I think to me, the biggest, most elegant, um, uh, what was it like a mother's day brunch? That was the biggest, most elegant elegant, um, episode and event they had, because that's the whole point of housewives. We're, we're trying to watch these women put on, you know, displays of elegance and be coquettish and be like peacocks, you know, live vicariously through their, you know, elegant and fancy lives. And that showcased that what was it? It was Candace's event and the other ladies, what have they done? What, what, what other events? It was stupid, just stupidity the whole season. And honestly, the last few episodes, I did not watch at all. I did not watch. This show has gone downhill. Thanks to Giselle and thanks to Robin. And now just Gis not Giselle. I keep saying Giselle. Candace has departed and I don't blame her. I honestly think that she may be uh, pregnant maybe, or she's focused on having a baby or she's close to it. And why let the toxicity of this show, you know, influence and, and just, just create a bad atmosphere when she's trying to bring a life into the world. And honestly, this show could have damaged her relationship with her husband. And I really feel like they just made a, a conscious decision together and they chose their marriage first. And, you know, kudos to her. Unlike Monique, who I think really let the show get to her. She let the show interfere with her personal life. And before they went on any further, I think it was smart for Candace, if that's what happened, for Candace and Chris to put a stop to the madness. Because Giselle is dangerous. Giselle is dangerous. She's an unhappy woman. And as if she can cause destruction in someone else's home, she'll, she, she will gladly do that. And I think that's what she, what she was doing. So, um, their outfits look all right. Um, let's see. NECA looks terrible. Ashley, her wig was sitting on what? I, I don't know what's going on. Ashley never looks right. Ashley never looks like she has it all together. You remember like Luther Vandross's curl? It was never quite right. That's Ashley. Um, who else? Wendy was all right. Candace was okay. Um, her makeup was a little like the lines weren't blurred in. Well, everybody was just okay. Okay. And of course, Giselle, she's just Giselle. Um, and you know what? Some people, and I've said this before, some women are naturally pretty. And when they put makeup on, and I feel like I'm that way too. I don't really wear makeup that much. I feel like when I wear makeup, it makes me look like a man, like a, like, like in, like I'm in drag. And I think Robin, that's her issue too. She has a natural beauty that when she puts makeup on, she just looks looking like a man. 
So anyhow, let's just go, you know, quickly through these because I was just disgusted. So Robin and Karen, I don't understand where this whole, Andy asked Karen about her body count. I really don't understand what that was about. Maybe I missed something with the last few episodes, but again, Karen is a bullshitter. So she was, of course, talking around it. And she's a lady. You know, they say ladies never tell, you know, but she's a married woman. So I didn't understand the question. Something must have happened that I missed. But again, Robin is an idiot. She walked right into it. She tried to call Karen out. Oh, so you don't know. You can't keep track of who you've been with in the last five years. And Karen said, yeah, but we know Juan can't or something like that. Robin, listen. You cannot throw stones in a glass house. You can't, you, you just stay quiet. You, you have no room to talk on this stage about anything. And she sounded stupid. She looks stupid when she tries to throw jabs at people. People have so much ammunition against Robin in the name of Juan that she just sounds, if I were her, I would just sit there and eat your damn food. Okay. You and Juan. Cause you, you can't come for anyone. You have no room. So that was a weird exchange. And then, so now, then um, Andy, I remember, was questioning Robin. He, listen, I don't know if this is what caused her. Everyone is speculating that Robin was fired. And I think so too, because Juan is just non-cooperative. Juan wants to cheat in peace. Juan doesn't want cameras around. He doesn't want the spotlight of RHOP. He either forced Robin to quit or she got fired for Juan being so uncooperative, okay? He didn't even show up. Even Gordon, and we'll get to that later. If Gordon can show up, Juan can show up. But he did not, left his wife high and dry. So they were questioning her about, you know, like, the, the discrepancies with Juan and his stories, we all see it for what it is. Everyone sees it. And you know what? You ever have friends where they know, you know, that your man is up to no good, but they want to be a supportive friend because they know you are just blind to it or you're, you're being willfully ignorant. And so what can your friends do? They just say, you know what? If she believes it, then I believe it too. Wink, wink. And that's what they did to Robin. And I, for the life of me, Robin is over 40 years old. She got to be a good 44, 45. Like, I don't know what is this hold Juan has over Robin. I was like that up until five, six years ago, last few years in my marriage. I was like, listen, this is just ridiculous. I was like Robin, but I also was 18, 19, 20 years old. The red flags were there. From the beginning, I just, I ignored it. I just ignored them. And I don't know what it was. I, I don't know if it was the pressure, cultural pressure of just finishing school, get married, you know, and have these kids and just be a family, you know? And my warning for Robin, and I've said this to you guys before, is when you stay in something that is meant you know, to, to end when you stay in a situation that does not serve you and it's dragging you down, it's dragging your self-esteem down, your self-worth down. And it's something that's ordained by God to be over. Cause now I truly believe, I didn't believe it at first, just like God, you know, can ordain unions and stuff. When you are unequally yoked and it doesn't serve you and it's not God's will for you, he can will for it to, to be done. I think that's what happened to me because I truly really tried to stick it through and it ended in catastrophe. It did end in catastrophe. And I, you know, I tried, I said, God doesn't, you know, want my union to end and all of that. But, you know, I really believe that. I really do believe that, you know, um, when you just sit and just stir and stew and stuff, you're not meant to be, then it's going to end in a big bang. Anywho. So, so I honestly feel like it's not going to end well with Robin and Juan. I can, I, like I said, I've been there. He does not care for her. He does not like her. 
Okay. He may have love for her as the mother of his children. He does not like her. He doesn't want to be around her. Now, unless this is a charade he is putting on for the cameras, and I hope that in real life it's different, and that's why Robin just is insistent upon believing Juan is her person, then I, 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 I just don't know. And you can tell everyone else on the cast, even her, her BFF Giselle, you know, they're just like, They've given up. What can you say to this woman? And I really feel like Robin is one of those people, I've said this before, that, you know, she comes from a lineage of people who do not believe in separation. She just doesn't want to fall into that stigma of being a single mom. She she does not want to be in that group. She doesn't want that to be her identity. I really believe that. And so now, uh, you know, oh boy, where do I, I don't even know where to pick up. Okay. So then Robin and Candace go at it. Okay. Candace wholeheartedly believes that Giselle, um, Caillou, AKA Ashley and Robin conspired to accuse Chris of, you know, um, not assaulting. And that was a strong, I'll get to that. That was a strong, those were strong words for her to use, but basically she feels like they all three conspired to throw the storyline out there of Chris forcing Giselle into the room to take attention away from Juan and his indiscretions. Now, I mean, I, I don't know because I, I, it's a tough one. Like I wouldn't put it past them. Candace must have a clue somehow, some way. She wholeheartedly believes this, okay? So Candace knows these women. She's around them. We as the viewing, viewing audience are not around them, you see? So she must have gotten clue from somebody. She must have gotten clue from maybe one of the producers. Something told for her to be so convinced she got the information from somewhere. Now, I wouldn't put it past them because Giselle is the same person. She's the same person who was trying to conspire to bring on the paternity allegations bet between Monique and the trainer and her husband, Chris, as well. So I would not put it past them at all, all right? Giselle, like, like I said, is very dangerous. And Candace knows this. That could be why, too, because she knows that Giselle has tried to plot things before. All right. So now we get into, and Robin is like, oh no, that's preposterous. And, and Candace is sticking to her guns, you know? So they go back and forth. And then, um, Candace and Giselle go back and forth. And Giselle accused Candace or holds Candace responsible for the death threats that they've all received. Again, the line is always moving because everybody on almost everyone on reality TV has received death threats. Okay. Um, Candace received many death threats. I've seen comments myself when it came to the Monique fight, people were wishing death on Candace. All right. So for for Giselle to try to place blame on, on Candace, Candace only went at Giselle because of what Giselle did. So if you got death threats, Giselle, it's by your own actions for concocting stories and trying to freaking break people's families apart. So yes, if you did get death threats, that's your doing. It's not Candace's. And again, Giselle does not know how to take accountability. And again, trying to place blame on Candace. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So you should think twice when you're trying to break people's families up. Think about your kids. You think about your daughters. Because I would not go acting a plum fool on reality TV. And I know I have kids. And we know we live in a crazy world. And you're sitting there making up lies on people and produce, and I'm happy producers roll the clips back where she vehemently denied that she said that she said Chris made her. And I knew even before the producers rolled back the tapes, I knew she said he made me. She did say it. And she's sitting there lying. And I don't know why Andy, why don't they play the clips back right then and there? 
That's what pisses me off. And then hold Giselle's feet to the fire. Like you did say it. What do you have to say for yourself? What do you have to say? And that's why Candace views venom, ve spews venomous speech at Giselle. She deserves it because you're coming after her livelihood. You're come at, coming after Chris's livelihood. You're coming after their family. What if she was pregnant during this, during the, at that time? And then she would have had to break up with him. You're come. So you want everyone to end up like you did. You want to everyone, everyone to, to go through the broken homeness that you did, that, that, that your girls are now in. You want everyone to be miserable like you. That's what it is. So uh, again, I don't mind that every time she had a chance to, Candace freaking wore her ass out, wore her ass out, and rightfully so, because Giselle never took accountability. Instead, she doubled down and she played victim. And that's why they said, you sit there with your white looking privileged ass, because that is Karen behavior. That's that shit that, gets, that got Emmett Till killed the same shit. And she doesn't realize it. She just sits there with her jowls and her wrinkled neck again. Yes. With her stovepipe legs, you deserve a, 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 a verbal tongue lashing because of your antics. You you're literally trying to break people's homes up. And you know what? What's funny is previous seasons, Giselle was on Chris's dick. She was on Chris's jock. She was. So that's why I, I kind of understand where Candace is coming from, where she said they conspired because literally Giselle did an about face. If Chris said, come here, let me talk to you, because he felt comfortable because they had a rapport at one time. Now, the one part, and I could be, see, a lot of people may think I'm biased. It's not that I'm biased. Um, and I'm all up for, for Candace. No, what's right is right. And what's wrong is wrong. Now I do feel that when she said Giselle accused him of sexual assault, she took it too far because that's not what, what, what Giselle accused him of. She didn't say that. However, I understand Candace in her heightened, you know, emotional state. I understand what she's trying to say when when Giselle says that he forced me into the room, he forced me, you're leaving space. You're leaving a lot of space for interpretation. You're leaving a lot of space for innuendo. You're leaving a lot of space. A lot can be said with a few words. So again, deceitful, spiteful people know how to do that. They'll say things in a way and it's, it's a dog whistle. It is a dog whistle. So, but for Candace to just come out and say it, see, it, it's, it's touchy because again, these are verbal games. People say where, where Giselle can say, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yeah. But we know what you were trying to get at. So what was he trying to force you to do? Giselle, what made you so uncomfortable about it? Well, th think about it. You guys, she says, I was uncomfortable. Why were you uncomfortable? Why? Because he forced me into the room. Okay, he forced you in the room for what? Well, I don't know if he was go going to what? See, that's that's where the innuendos lie. That's the issue right there. So now, all right, let's move along. Giselle's evil. We know that. Giselle is evil. She's bringing the show down. I do not think that I will watch RHOP ever again, except for one thing. One thing can save it, and I will... Um, bring that up in the end. So now here's the part that got social media up in a tizzy and it showed that Giselle is a true bitch, but you can't, I don't expect anything less from her, anything less than being a bitch. So now I think Andy asked, um, Candace, I'm sorry. I love Candace, but now that I think about it, it does make me chuckle. Where can you and Robin go from here? And then Aunt Candace said, oh, hold up, I need a tissue. And she's <laughs> and she was about to bring on the waterworks. Giselle, Miss Big and Bad and Bold Giselle, was like, oh, tears, oh, tears, ha, 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 tears. That was fucked up. In the moment, because Candace was crying, Giselle started mocking her tears. And 
listen, the tears dried right up and Candace said, you're a fucking bitch. And rightfully so. Listen, at that moment, Giselle was, was, was fucked up. But let me play devil's advocate. They don't like each other. Giselle doesn't like her. But my thing, what's funny is Giselle ignored her all season, did not talk to her. But now when Andy's present, right, and they probably have security and producers on set, that's when Giselle felt bold enough to speak up and talk shit. See, Giselle's a punk too. Giselle's a punk, a big time punk. No matter what y'all say about Candace, she doesn't give a fuck. She's going to run her mouth. A lot of people say she talked to, she's going to run her mouth. She don't care who's there. You got to give her that. Giselle waits for like a true, like, like a Karen, right? For people to be around and then she'll try to pop off, but won't pop off in other settings. So now she starts, you know, she starts crying and Giselle's mocking her. And then Candace, listen, cussed her ass out. You know, you know what made me chuckle is because listen, like, like Candace, like Mia, I'm a Sag. I'm always crying. Listen, I will cry at the drop of a hat. I, I am a crier. I get angry a lot, but I'm, I cry. I'm emotional. I cry. That's why I identify with Candace. So now the other day, this, this was maybe last month. I was in one of my emotional states and I was talking to my mom and my, my father was in the background. And then I, I start, my mom was like, what's wrong? So I start crying and I start like pouring, you know, my heart out to her about like, I, you know, I harbor a lot of internal hurt from the past. I, and I don't know what it is about me. I will cry about things that happened in middle school. I will cry about things that happened in high school. I just hold on to a lot of hurt. And, you know, I was just, I just broke down. And my mom was like, are you crying? <laughs> She's like, oh, oh, stop. Oh, please. Oh, God. And my dad's in the background. He's like, what's going on? What's, what's going on? She's like, oh, God, your daughter here is crying. She's making herself cry. She's forcing herself to cry. He's like, are you kidding me? Oh, loser, shut up. <laughs> my parents, they both told me to shut the fuck up. My parents were not happy. They're like, oh God, here she goes again. So listen, when I tell you my tears evaporated so fast, so fast. So I was like, all right. They're like, do you know what we've been through? You got it good. You got it made. You spoiled brat. They went, listen, they let me have it. So with, with, um, with Candace, Giselle has no sympathy. First of all, she hates her. She does not like her. Number two, can, uh, Giselle is a single mother with three children with a, with a, you know, broken marriage. And, you know, he was cheating on her left and right. He put her in a mental asylum, drove her nuts. And she sees Candace here, you know, living life through rose colored glasses with a husband who loves her with a, a supportive family, supportive siblings, supportive mother. You know, th people don't like that. People are not going to cheer you on. And a lot of fans out there that can't relate to Candace see her. They're like, she's so soft. She's lived a soft life. A lot of, I've noticed mainly from hood girls, not every, everyone, but mainly Candace gets a lot of hate from hood girls because Candace can't relate to them. They can't relate to Candace. I've seen that. That's why a lot of them identified with Monique because Monique proclaimed, I'm from the hood. And that those are the ones who want to bash Candace head in. I've seen it. I've seen the comments. So Giselle doesn't have room to talk. She can't because Candace got it bad. I think Candace was on the verge of, of essing herself at one point. You know, so, all right. So that's that we, we, let's get over that whole clip. You know, Giselle's a bitch, whatever. We know this and Giselle is bringing the show down. I don't know what's going to happen to the show after this. I really don't. Now let's go to Mia, Mia. Why you acting like a punk, like a punk, Mia, Mia. Listen, Mia now is one of my faves because Mia is unapologetic and she's a fellow Sag. See, the thing about Sages is me and other Sages, once, like when we first meet each other, we don't like each other. A lot of people do not like Sages. 
especially each other. There's a lot of Sages I've run into. I don't like them. They don't like me. But with a Sag, you have to warm up to them. You have to really get to know them. And a lot of people have said that about me. Oh, I thought you were this, and but I got to know. Yeah, that's why I really don't care about people's first impressions. Because once I know they get to know me, listen, it's I, I'm a darling. You know, this is where it's at. And so Candace, I think when they first... If you remember, um, Sharice did not really see it for Candace, but now they are good friends. Um, Mia did not see it for Candace. Now they are good friends. And even Jacqu Jacqueline and Candace are really good friends. And Mia and Candace now I think, yes, they are cool too. So Mia now, I'm, I've warmed up to her. I Listen, I love me some Mia. I'm telling you right now. Mia is that girl. Mia has... Gordon, I don't even know if, they're, if their divorce is final. She got Gordon and she got her side boo. Like, talk about sprinkle, sprinkle, Mia, Mia. Why are you acting like a punk? Mia is that girl, and I'm telling you, Mia could save this show. If I watch it, I want to see the fuckery that ensues between her, Gordon, and whoever her dude's name is. I don't even know what his name is. The radio DJ or music or personality, whatever he is. But anyway, so they bring that up, her and Gordon. And then allegedly, Wendy reveals, I think, that Gordon said that her current dude, what's his name? It's a weird name. Key, Kai, Q, whatever, thinks that there's her son, Jeremiah, who I thought was Gordon's, is really his. How old is Jeremiah? And I'm so confused. I thought they just rekindled. So this has been for years. I, I can't wrap my head around it, but that's where it left off. And then so Wendy act like she was dropping a bomb. See, this is why I love a Sages. Wendy act like she was dropping a bomb. And Mia was like, no, yeah, he really does think that's, yep. He thinks that's his son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next. Yep. I, I couldn't believe it. Anyways, listen, um, let's stay tuned. Let's see what happens next week. I'm, I'm, man, I'm on the fence. I don't know. As for now, I feel like the show is destroyed at the hands of Giselle and Robin. They've really done a number on this show. I think that the producers and Andy see it too. Candace is a huge, huge loss. Love her or hate her. Candace's departure is a major blow to this show. So listen, please like, comment, subscribe. And, you know, till next time, you're a bitch.